My name is absolutely not Apricot, and as well as wearing Lolita fashion, I also study at Oxford University. This video is going to be me talking a bit about how people reacted to me wearing Lolita fashion at Oxford University. Um, firstly, I'll be talking about my journey of revealing myself to various characters around campus, how they reacted, how I felt, and the second part of the video is just going to be me charting out the various things that people have said to me about Lolita fashion. And hopefully it will be funny, sometimes annoying, and it will reveal its, reveal something about the true character of the students at Oxford University. I mostly wanted to make this video to show other people who are considering wearing alternative fashion, especially a hyper-feminine fashion like this one, what you could expect wearing alternative fashion at Oxford University and for people who don't wear alternative fashion and don't plan to, just to showcase some of the amusing moments in my journey. I won't be talking about studying or what Oxford's like in general because I think other people have done that far better than I could and also because what you see before you now is a timeline of my first year at Oxford. Here's the first term, Michaelmas, second term, Hillary, and third term, Trinity. I'll be using sticky notes to populate this timeline with various incidents that happen throughout the year. Firstly, let's start with North Week. North Week is a week before your studies start, in which you don't have any work usually, but sometimes you do, and in which freshers have to kind of socialise and get to know each other um, and get to know Oxford. So during my first week, um, I planned my outfits meticulously so that I would appear like a normal person for at least the first four days. I started off wearing a very neutral outfit that was a bit more cool girl, less feminine, and I slowly throughout the week started adding more and more feminine elements to my outfits. Until finally on Saturday, I went to the movies with some friends and I just turned up wearing Lolita fashion. And no one said anything mean to me, it was all perfectly nice. And I even got an Instagram photo that is currently one of my favourites in front of a church in Oxford. So that was already a good sign. All the people my age didn't really care that I wore these fashion, it was just like another character quirk. And nothing dramatic happened. Hi, this is Editing Apricot. I filmed the original video without a script and I later realised there was a bunch of stuff I'd left out. So I'm just going to be popping in to add stuff every so often. Also, I have a cold, so just ignore that. Um, I wanted to start by adding some context of even before I came to uni. Um, during sixth form, which is the last two years of high school for Americans, um, I didn't wear Lolita at all, even though my school, my sixth form college, didn't have a uniform policy. I just kept wearing like relatively normal fashion, sometimes a bit more out there, but in general I was accepted by the people around me, I just didn't want to like venture that far out. I only started wearing Lolita in the first year of sixth form, so about two or three years ago now, when the old school boom was just starting and when I started to get into it. So um, when I was in that phase, I just, I didn't want anyone at my school to find out, I thought, you know, <laughs> that's one more thing I don't want to have to deal with. And actually, that is the reason that my Instagram name right now is called doublelife.sweet. It started as genuinely a double life. I would only wear Lolita around people I really trusted and I didn't want anyone else to find out. I blocked a bunch of people to make sure that they wouldn't find me. I just really didn't want that side of myself to be discovered. But then when I came to university, I thought I don't want to hide this anymore. I just want to go out there and live my life. But I was full of insecurities and worries about it because I'd heard lots of horror stories on the internet and also because of this, okay, this is quite specific, a manga called Cat Street by the same author as Boys Over Flowers. It's a shoujo manga, but it features a girl who wears Lita, who's part of the central friendship group, who is kind of rejected by her crush and all her classmates because she wears Lolita. So reading that obviously like did not inspire confidence in me at all. So at the end of sixth form for my yearbook, I submitted my first ever photo 
of me wearing EGL, Lilita, and um, I was voted best dressed and most fashionable, but that's my real name, so it's covered. And that kind of inspired confidence in me that no matter what, I would find a way to dress that was accepted by other people. Now let's say cinema. So my first real interaction of wearing Lily to fashion around people my age was not negative. It was completely neutral. No one really cared. They were like, oh wow, nice dress. And then they moved on. Good sign. Around this time as well, during North Week, I received my copy of Rose Red Memorandum's first scene, in which I actually model the male set of clothing from the Royal Crown Valerie series. I absolutely love Rose Red Memorandum. If I had the money, I would own all of their stuff. They're such a cool, like ethical, neo old school brand and the brand owner is so lovely. And I just think it was a really cool experience that I got to participate in the making of this scene. However, when I put this on my story, um, it started some misunderstandings because I think some people thought, oh, uh, Apricot wears this fashion because she's a model and you know, it's, it's nothing personal. But actually, I kind of got this job by chance. I'm not actually a model and I wear these clothes because I like them. So it was a fun little misunderstanding because it would be nice to be a model, um, but no. I wear these clothes because I like to and I've been really lucky to appear in this magazine. So progressing from North Week, we go into First Week in which I had my first lecture. For my first lecture, I turned up in Lolita fashion wearing the Angelic Pretty University set and I was completely isolated. Um, it wasn't great. The thing is, I had... So that was my first lecture. No hitches. Um, I'll talk about my second week of lectures in the second part of the video because there was a slightly funny incident. But on this same day as the first lecture, I also had a run in with my tutor because I attended a psychological study. You know, with students, we see an opportunity to earn a tenor and we go. And it was held at the same place as my lectures. So I turn up to the place where you're meant to fulfill the study after lectures and I'm wearing full elite fashion and my tutor is there, running the study, and I've never met this man before. Well, I have, but like, for half an hour? An hour tops in which we made small talk and, you know, didn't really learn about each other. And, um, yeah, he's there running the study and I've walked into the room wearing, like, a full angelic pretty set. And I kind of say, hey, yeah, hey, apricot, and then I sit down at the table, I do the study, I collect my £10 and I walk out. And from then on, it's like, he never says anything. Well, he does. We'll address that in the second part of the video. But yeah, okay. Nothing too negative. And from that point, I know that he knows. I know that he knows that I wear elite fashion. So even though he's a tutor, he's a big, scary person with a position of power. I know I can turn up wearing Lolita fashion and it's nothing new. He already knows he hasn't really reacted. So that's the first one or two weeks of my Oxford experience. And one out of my five or so tutors knows that I wear Lolita fashion. Everyone at my college in my year and most of the people who attend lectures. So that's pretty good going. Um, we get to about halfway through this term, fourth week, and it's Halloween and we have a college organised party. And for the last few college organised parties, they've been costume parties and I, not willing to spend money, have just recycled Lolita clothing and incorporated it into various costumes. I was a pirate, um, okay, I can't remember the other ones. I was a pirate and for Halloween, I was a sheep wearing this dress and a pair of white ears. And at one of, at this party, um, someone comes up to me and they say, apricot, Nice dress, but it's not really a costume, is it? It's what you wear. And even though it was quite rude in the context of like a costume party, A, he was correct. And B, it was quite validating in its own way because it showed that like people associated me with 
dressing in this way. He didn't judge me for it. It was not a costume. It was just the way that apricot dresses. Something people asked me a bit later was why did I start wearing Lolita so early and not get to know people first and make a normal impression first before just starting wearing it in the first week? And my response to that was I didn't want to make friends with people and then find out that they would judge me for this and lose friends over it. I wanted to establish it early and not go through any heartbreak because of it. I wanted to make friends with people who were accepting and nice and thankfully everyone was and I <laughs> have friends like that but I don't necessarily think that making friends with people and then revealing your true self is the best way to go about it. I think you should be yourself and find people who will accept that. So that was my first term. One of my tutors knew, people around my college knew and people on my course knew that I wear Lolita fashion. I had had some judgment but nothing too serious, people knew it wasn't a costume and overall we were doing pretty good. We get to second term and because of the way my schedule is lined up I get to not cycle as much and wear Lolita fashion more and I start studying more at some of Oxford's famous libraries including the Radcam and the Bodleian Library, Bodleian? I actually still don't know how to pronounce this but I start studying at some of the more famous of Oxford's libraries and I realise that I love it because once you're in there, everyone is so stressed out by their own work that they completely ignore you and you get to study wearing the least fashion without judgement at all. And it's great because when you're in the streets, when you're heading to lectures or tutorial wearing the least fashion, you do get a bit of judgement, like old people, tourists <laughs> will generally kind of stare at you or express in one of their silent ways that they do not approve of what you're wearing. But once you're in the library, it's like a force field. You're completely free and I love it. So that's libraries. People ignore you. But as I said before, on the streets, people do stare a lot. And this is a lot worse on weekends because on weekends, tourists fill the town and a the streets are crammed, so you wearing a petticoat is just generally not appreciated. You're taking up a lot of space. But B, I think a lot of international tourists maybe are not that familiar with elite fashion and you do get a lot of people staring, kind of laughing at you in the street, and it's generally not that pleasant. Also in second term, but towards the end of the first term as well, I've been asking people on my floor to help me with getting dressed sometimes because as you will know, if you wear this fashion, doing your own back bows or corseting can be quite difficult in the morning. So I kind of made it a habit of like peeking my head out of my door in the mornings and catching someone on the way to lectures to say, hey, sorry, if you've got the time, can you do my back bow? And they did, which was very nice. So that's help from others. Towards the middle of this term as well, I had a project in which you could incorporate some of your own life experience into the subject of your presentation and I chose to incorporate Lolita Fashion and this was with one of the tutors who didn't know that I wore Lolita Fashion at the time. So I turned up to my allocated presentation slot wearing full black and white old school Lolita and I did my presentation and I got a pretty good grade and actually the tutor was really nice, she was very interested in it, um, she kind of called me cute and it was great um, and I realised, you know, she contributed to such a wholesome environment during tutorials that from then on I made an effort to wear Lolita there as much as possible just because I felt it was like one of the most accepting environments I had encountered in Oxford and later um, one of my tutorial partners messaged me and said isn't there a really strong correlation between you wearing full Lolita fashion and having this tutor for our tutorials? And I couldn't deny it, that's exactly what was going on. It was after that first tutorial in which I did a presentation that I also had one of the negative experiences that I will talk about later in the video. But it's safe to say that there's still some judgement amongst people my age in Oxford of the clothes that you wear. Moving on, um, so the same guy who messaged me saying, isn't there a funny correlation between you wearing Lolita and having this tutor, um, actually is Japanese. And he offered to 
act as a shopping service basically throughout the vacation and get me something from the baby the starshine bright store if i wanted and um that was just a really lovely thing for him to do and of course i took him up on it um he bought me two pairs of socks from baby the starshine bright which is my favorite brand and i experienced the joy of having some branded socks and they really revamped my wardrobe actually so that was a really lovely supportive thing for him to do and you know even if it wasn't the least fashion just something really nice okay i've zoomed in a bit here so that you can hopefully see the timeline as it's being completed better but now we're on our final term and in this final term i get the socks that this guy has bought for me and i pay him back and it's great and by this point most people know that i wear lolita fashion including a third tutor who just saw me wearing it and again i had the reaction that like well now he knows i can wear whatever i want so it's during the second week of the last term or thereabouts that the oxford fashion girl happens and it's a really cool event run by students run by the fashion society i think and one of the magazines where you get to see a fashion show of designs made by Oxford students and it's also an opportunity for the attendees to dress up and you'll get photographed and it's great. Um, and when I attended that is when I realised, oh, um, my definition of what, you know, a special out there outfit is and what other people's definition is are quite different because the, the brief or the kind of the suggested fashion for attendees of this event was dress as though Anna Wintour is going to be there. And the kind of, they had a Pinterest of like crazy outfits that had been on the runway recently that were kind of to inspire you. And generally they were hyping up the event as somewhere that Oxford's wildest fashion was going to get showcased. So me and my friend get a ticket and we're going there and I'm wearing my new body line dress, uh, not this one, um, and rocking horse shoes, Vivienne jewellery, living my best life, I think I look great, um, and he's wearing streetwear, and we're going to this event, and we just get closer to the venue, and we keep seeing people who are wearing normal formal wear, and it's really freaking us out, because, well, this changes when we get there, but the general impression is that most people are just dressing as if they're going to a nice dinner, and we're <laughs> wearing alternative fashion. Um, we get there and thankfully there are many more people wearing interesting clothing and we don't feel so alone. But it's true that the majority of the people there were not wearing anything too out of the ordinary. They were dressed very well. They looked really nice and they were wearing fancy clothing, but they weren't really pushing the boundaries of fashion. And yeah, that was just kind of an interesting moment in realising what the fashion scene is like in Oxford. Something I also found interesting is that along with the old school boom, which has been happening for two or three years now, um, Vivian Westwood has also gone through a boom recently. And um, especially the pearl chokers and the jewellery is really on trend and I love it. Um, but it surprised me that rocking horse shoes are still really surprising to a lot of people. They'll see them and go, oh my god, I've never seen anything like it. And I love rocking horse shoes. I've like given people the link to buy some. I want more people to wear them. But it is surprising to me that given that Vivienne Westwood has gone through this like renaissance in popular culture, some people still don't know about her other designs. Um, so we're now in this final term and I'm studying for my end of year exams now, my prelims or preliminaries. And for exams at Oxford, well, serious exams at Oxford, you have to wear something called subfusk, which is a uniform for exams, I guess you would say. You have to wear a white shirt, black trousers or skirt, black shoes, and a special gown. And because I'm extra, I guess, um, I decide for my exams, I'm going to incorporate elite fashion, and I wear a clip-on bow from one of my dresses, as my bow tie and an Emily Temple blouse that's got lace around the corners. And even though, you know, people didn't really notice they were too stressed out by exams, it was very nice for me because even in the, the depths of exams, I knew that I was 
wearing something I loved and slightly comforted by it. So that was the last term. You can tell, you know, last term is studying for exams, nothing too wild happens. Um, but this has actually reminded me of something that happened in the first term, which is during my matriculation, I also wore Angelic Pretty and Emily Temple. So matriculation, I'm pretty sure this exists at other universities as well, is where you have a ceremony to kind of induct you into the university and you also have to wear subclass cadet. So for that, I thought, start as you mean to go on. I wore my Emily Temple blouse. I used the clip-on tie from the university set from Angelic Pretty. And after the ceremony, I also wore a um, rectangle headdress. And yeah, it's now forever marked in history in my matriculation photo that I was wearing a tiny piece of Lolita fashion. So yeah, that was my first year at Oxford. This was how I, you know, I started as I meant to go on. I introduced a bunch of people to wearing Lisa and then I got more casual about it as I was going along. But I still think for tutors, I remained quite wary of wearing Lolita fashion just because I didn't want to sour their opinion of me, especially because they were marking things that I was handing in. Overall though, it was pretty good. Um, now I'm going to move on to the second part of the video. Now we're on the second part of the video and I've drawn up this handy chart to document the incidences that happened throughout the year at Oxford. I've chosen to put the axes as serious or funny and positive or negative. I know this isn't the only way I could have laid them out, but I didn't want the graph to start getting too complicated. I also considered whether people, you know, meant to be mean or whether it was a misunderstanding, but then that would have added too much. And especially in my subject that I'm studying, we love graphs with these four different boxes. So I thought I would stay true to my colours and do that. To calibrate the chart, let me get some of the obvious ones out of the way. Okay, so you know how I said that during my second lecture, there was a funny incident? This is it. Do you cosplay? So this was like the first thing that a guy said to me as I walked into the lecture theatre. And at this point I was wearing normal clothing. I was wearing a fairly toned down outfit, black and beige, nothing too out there. And um, this kind of familiar face, like the first thing he says is, oh, hey apricot, do you cosplay? And I'm in front of some people I've never met before as well at this point. And I feel really quite put on the spot. So I have to be like, yes, I do cosplay, but what you've seen me wearing previously was not cosplay, it's just clothes I like to wear. And I know that he wasn't trying to be mean or anything, this is like genuine curiosity, but it still stays with me as like quite a funny moment to introduce the fact that I wear Lily's fashion to a bunch of people I've never met before. This one is a comment from the first tutor who knew that I wore Lily's fashion. And um, I was sat in a tutorial group with maybe six people. I was wearing Lolita. There was another girl wearing also alternative fashion. And he said, we've got an interesting mix of fashion in this room right now. Um, except that he had a New Zealand accent, so it didn't quite sound like that. But um, it's kind of, kind of funny for your own tutor to be mildly insulting you like that. I couldn't really say anything back, but this man only dressed in Uniqlo, so who is he to judge? This always happens, right? Um, so given that I go to Oxford, I should have expected this, but when I mentioned Lolita fashion around someone, they were like, oh, like the book? And I was like, no, not like the book, please, you've got to understand me. This always happens. Like, people who are not in the fashion and don't understand its history We'll just kind of tell you what the meaning of it is. And listen, I would also prefer not to have to tell people I wear Lolita fashion. I would much prefer something else. But the name is, as for now and probably forever, Lolita fashion. And I just have to deal with it. It sucks. Yeah, this is why I often introduce the fashion to other people as like EGL fashion 
or neo rococo fashion and just kind of like gently wait for them to get to know me a bit before I mention the word Lolita. So this was someone I choose to hang out with um, who said, when do you think you'll grow out of this? And I don't think he was trying to be mean, but it came off quite mean. It did make this fashion sound a bit childish. And also it's a bit ignorant, really. There is no defined age for wearing Lolita fashion. Anyone can wear it. Some people are often surprised to know that like men also wear this fashion, but it seems quite clear to me that no matter who you are or how you define yourself, you can dress in the way that you want. And I don't know when I'm going to grow out of this fashion and if I will at all. So yeah, it's kind of annoying, but, but I know he didn't have bad intentions at all. And it's kind of funny that one of my friends said this. Okay. This was the same guy who asked me whether I would grow out of it, who said, isn't part of the appeal to you that you dress in a way that's not like other people? Which was, I felt quite attacked. Um, because it's essentially asking you if you have some sort of individuality complex. But the thing is, after some reflection, I realised that whilst it's not necessarily about defining yourself in opposition to other people, um, there is something about Lolita fashion that is inherently, you know, quite outside of what other people would consider normal. I mean, some of the mainstays of our fashion in terms of like cultural media, such as Kamikaze Girls, um, is about how people who wear Lolita fashion don't fit in or are excluded. And we do kind of like to define ourselves in this way of like one frilly girl against the world. and. So yeah, there is an element of I'm not like other girls, but I also am other girls on every other day. I wear basic clothing. I love makeup. I mean, because I wear a hyper feminine fashion, I'm acutely aware that other people will judge you for being feminine. And I don't want to have any part in that. Um, I also think on a related note that I am quite lucky to wear old school mostly because if I had chosen to wear, you know, bright pink pastels or something, I must, well, I might have received a lot more judgment because as it is, Oxford already has this culture of like, liking dark academia and taking themselves very seriously in an old timey kind of way. So when I wore clothes that were much more obviously Victorian inspired, I think people respected me a bit more. Whereas if I had been even more hyper feminine, I might have been, judged more, if that makes sense. I think people who wear OTT sweet might have a very different experience for me, and that kind of sucks. Okay, I hope you can read that, but that says religious. Um, and this was a guy who, after my first tutorial, when I was presenting about Lolita fashion and wearing Lolita fashion, asked me, oh yeah, it's so weird what you're wearing. Are you wearing religious clothing? And I was kind of stunned, to be honest. Um, because he he also asked me whether it was Amish, Amish clothing, um, and they kind of define themselves by their st simple lifestyle. So... So this is my college ball. Um, Oxford has balls organised by college, and at mine, there was another woman wearing Lolita fashion. Um, she was wearing a lovely gothic dress and I went up and we had a chat and we ended up going to high tea later after exams. And it was really nice. And I realized, you know, no matter how isolated you think you are, Lolitas are everywhere. You know, don't think that you're alone. Don't think that you've never seen one before because someone you love might be a Lolita. Um, it made me realize that actually a lot of people don't want to bring their whole wardrobe with them or they don't want the hassle of wearing a petticoat around so they just don't wear Lolita during term time. But they're like people who wear Lolita fashion are a lot more common than you might think. So far, I know of at least three other people in Oxford who wear Lolita fashion and there probably are more. So don't think that, you know, you're going to be alone because there will surely be someone else who wears Lolita fashion. So someone drew me when I was sat in the library 
And this wasn't totally out of the blue because we'd been passing each other notes while we were drawing each other, but it made me realise how multi-talented people at Oxford are because I was sending like cheap doodles and she sent me back just a really lovely drawing, which I'll put up on screen. Um, so yeah. Okay, just before I conclude, quick fire round. Are you getting married? Are you a maid? And do you usually dress like a Victorian ghost? All of these are quite funny, but completely off the mark. So what's the conclusion with all of this masking tape and sticky notes? I would say that I've had a pretty positive experience at Oxford University and people have been much more accepting than I'd previously hoped. I came in quite insecure about wearing the loose fashion. I knew that I wanted to wear it as much as possible because I had spent money on the dresses and I wanted to be true to myself. But I had also read lots of comics and watched films where people were discriminated against because they wore Lolita fashion and I was prepared for the worst. But even though people could be ignorant, they weren't malevolent and I got lots of well-meaning curiosity, people learning more about it, people supporting me. And I would say that if you want to wear alternative fashion at Oxford University, you should. Um, even if you don't go to Oxford University, you should wear what you want and forget what everyone else says. No matter what other people might say, there'll always be someone who supports you and you'll always know that the way that you dress is making you happy. I think the most common comment that I got that I haven't put on here yet is, no, it's cool. Because I would say something along the lines of, yeah, I'm wearing my silly frilly fashion again. And they'd say, no, it's cool. But the thing is, I acknowledge that the way that I dress is a bit silly for the modern day. There's a reason that we've changed to wearing jeans and it is more convenient, but the way I dress makes me happy and things can be a bit ridiculous and also make you happy. And I think the fact that people were willing to defend me from myself was a really nice sign. People, even if they don't initially know that much about what you're wearing or if they're initially confused, will make an effort to learn a bit more. They won't judge you, they'll try and be on your side. And I think that's something that I really appreciated is people who, even though they didn't know that much, were willing to learn or just didn't judge me at all and moved on with their lives. So overall, I would say that I've had a really positive experience and I can't wait for my next year. Thank you for watching and may your own fashion endeavours go as well as mine have.